I'm your host, Mike, and you're watching Paranormal Highways. Look, this gentleman I got with me, I don't know. We clashed. We claimed. We done. I don't know how it worked out, but I met him through that wonderful group, Trinity Paranormal. And ever since then, man, he's been a great friend of mine. Everybody, welcome my good friend, Chris Nuora. Yes, that's it. <laughs> All right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Can you see me yet? No, I still don't see you. <laughs> I'm, I, does every I, does everybody see Chris and me? Hello, Shante. Uh, I'm waiting for somebody to answer because does everybody see both of us? Misty called us freaks. <laughs> for some reason, I have to keep scrolling down. I, I do not like that part. All right. All right. Mr. Said loves Chris. Hello, Chris. Nice to put your name on with a face. All right, guys. Check it out. Let's get started. They can both see it. They can all see both of them. So good deal. For some reason, he can't see me. I'm staying hidden. My bad, Chris. <laughs> as long as I can hear you. Yeah, I guess that'll work. I mean, it keeps you from getting scared away if you look at my mug. <laughs> <laughs> never, never <been. laughs> 
<laughs> I tell you what, let's get started with this. We know you're a paranormal investigator. I know some of the things that you've done. So we'll start it real easy. How long you been doing this? Uh, what pro professionally, like actually doing it with equipment and you know trying to uh, get, get evidence and help people, probably about four years. But um, pretty much been doing it my whole life, though. You know, like I've been going to like uh, places like you know abandoned psych wards and stuff like that with a with those old uh, recorders with the little uh, you used to have to put the little thing in the little tape. Little tape in. Yeah, the little old the old recorders before they became digital. Ah, so you've been you've been doing it for a while, then. Yeah. Yeah, I like those uh, with the ones with the great big ones, the cassettes. Is that yeah. The ones? yeah. <laughs> so what you, what got your interest in the paranormal anyway? Uh, well, when I was a kid, I um I grew up in a haunted house, and you know just normal stuff, hearing footsteps, bangs, doors and open and closing, but it seemed to only happen to me. So, you know, I kind of not didn't really I, after I told them a few times and they told me I was crazy. <laughs> you know, I kind of stopped telling them. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you, you've done it since you was young and you've had a haunted house, man. So I've seen some of the stuff you've done. Uh, a lot of people out there don't uh, get to see what you do and how you do it. And I, I'm actually one of the lucky ones. Um went through what you post on Trinity and all that other stuff. Uh, so tell us some of the uh, techniques that you like to use when you're out there investigating. Um, well, one of the biggest techniques is that, you know, we try not to, when we do EVP recording and stuff like that, we try not to, um, you know, like we try not to talk over each other. We wait. We have a, a rule that we wait 30 seconds after each question to give the spirit time to answer. Because sometimes you'll somebody will five seconds later start answering their question, and then you can't really hear the spirit because, you know, because we're talking. Right. And not have everybody moving around and, you know, just less chaos. So you'd say you like you like audio a lot. But you yeah. Do that, yeah, you do more. That's me, too. Uh, so you do, I see the videos that you put out too. You capture some good stuff. Uh, you and Phil and Kat, you all done some things not too long ago. We seen. Yeah, we, um, we actually just, uh, I think it was like a week ago. We went to the Hinsdale house, uh, Hinsdale, New York. You know, it was on a uh, paranormal lockdown and a whole bunch of other shows on, um, you know, online shows and stuff. YouTube, a lot of people, paranormal investigators go there on YouTube. The place was haunted. <laughs> I got to tell you that. <laughs> I mean, uh, so is that one of y'all's favorite places to go? Well, it was the I've been there. That was the second time I was there, but uh, it was the first time for the rest of my team, Cat, Phil, and Martha. And right. uh, yeah, we um, definitely uh, had a eventful time. Definitely. So what was one of your favorite place or not favorite first places that you investigated when you first got uh, into this? Uh, the first place, um, probably it's called Creamore. It's a, uh, it's a psychiatric ward, just like, uh, like Rolling Hills or oh. all the, you know, trans Allegheny lunatic asylum, all those. It's just, um, you know, you weren't really allowed to go in them. But, yeah. <laughs> so it was one of those sneak and peek. <laughs> Too much, but that place was crazy, man. I would see shadow figures all the time, footsteps, things running at me, things thrown at me, and a lot of times when I was young, I would run away. <laughs> I was, I was out. You'd see me like I was running from the cops like a crackhead. Oh, when the cops <laughs> 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 was like a crackhead, you ain't right. Um. Phil Mass just says something about Kings Park. Yes, that's a place about 20 minutes away from me. I've been there probably over 100 times. And uh, we recently went there as a team, Trinity Paranormal. Um, and we got some crazy EVPs. We actually put some of them up on the page. One of them, we were saying goodbye, and something said, bye, bye now. Like, plain as day, like, you know, like, like he was oh. talking right there, but we couldn't hear it at the time. That's neat. It was kind of creepy though, because it was like it sounded like a southern gentleman. 
Really? Like somebody like old school English, like how they talk proper. Yeah. That's how it sounded. Hey, Thomas Edwards says you owe him a lot of donuts. <laughs> oh, yeah, <I> do. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Homer. I'm never going to live that one down. <laughs> <laughs> one of these days we'll hear the story about that one. We'll get him on here and get him that big story about donuts. All right. <laughs> Phil's coming up with Creedmoor. Creedmoor. Is that the place you was just talking about? Yes, that's the place Creedmoor. I was just talking about. Yeah, there's still buildings yeah. that are... Um, there's still buildings that are actually in function, but they had abandoned buildings when I was a kid. And there used to be this park called Alley Pond Park that we used to, because this is in Queens, in New York. And um, right. we used to, as kids, we would jump, you know, to jump the fences because nobody could see you because you're in the middle of the woods. So, right. you know, and they were abandoned even back in, you know, I guess this is what, like 95, 96. So you didn't have any kind of like backup or anything in case you got hurt? It was just you? No, well, I mean, sometimes I went with friends. Oh, okay. My friends were always creeped out by it. They didn't, you know, or some of them just didn't believe, you know, they would just go to hang out and, oh, that's just, a, you know, that's just, you know. Right. Like, how do you, uh, you hear footsteps coming up to you and then nobody's walking? Like, how do you explain that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Ann, Ann just said that uh, Chris gave places, places he could sneak into. So they know you very well. <laughs> there you go. I, I, just uh, about a month ago, I was at a place called Letchworth Village, which it was. Um, I don't know if you ever heard of Penhurst in yes. uh, Pennsylvania. It's like that. It was for mentally disturbed kids and physically disturbed kids. Yes. And um, it was very sad because in the fifties they uh, actually um, tested the polio vaccine on them. Really? On an eight-year-old kid that had no family, and uh, when he didn't die, they 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 tested on nineteen other kids. Holy cow! Yeah, it was. It was actually on Ghost Adventures when uh, Nick Groff was still on the show. Well, I didn't. I didn't miss that part. Yeah, it was a really good episode. Hey, Melissa yeah. asked. Real, oh, sorry, Chris. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Oh well, Melissa asked, "Do you have a place you haven't been to that you would like to go?" Oh, so many. <laughs> <laughs> I I haven't really ventured out of the state too much. I mean, I went to a place in Massachusetts on a Nick Groff tour. Uh, it was called the Murdoch Whitney House. And uh, Isaac Morris House, which you know, was really, uh, I was there with Nick Groff and um, Elizabeth Saint from, um, yeah. I forget what show that was. Wait oh, a minute, uh, Elizabeth Saint? Yeah, is... Ghost of Shepherd's Town. Yeah, yeah, or is it Morgantown? No, no, that's a new one. They're not on that one. Oh, okay, that, okay. That, that's like the spinoff of it. Oh, there's, okay. I was just wondering, I, I had somebody ask me, I forgot who it was, but she was a psychic for uh, or a medium for the ghost of Morgantown. And she asked if I could be on the podcast, if she could be on the podcast. So I, I don't I don't forget her name. I get so many. I get so many texts and stuff. But anyway, back to Chris. To it, I don't know what her name is, though. Now, you and somebody else, I'll let you mention you all are getting more into the scientific part of uh paranormal yes um so Mi kind of explain well. <laughs> so kind of i'll let you i'll let you explain exactly what uh you two are gonna kind of be up to and maybe something in the future you can look at um we're, we're trying to legitimize it so that you know people are not always called crazy when their houses are haunted and they need help um you know like we want to put it because, you know, mainstream science, you know, kind of puts this like where it's not, not anything like, yeah. you know, it's not true. It's, you know, there's people are just crazy, but you know, that's why if, if we fight amongst the paranormal world, like, Oh, that's not true. But like, I had people tell me the Spears box doesn't work, but they never used it. How can you know it doesn't work if, it, if you didn't use it? Like, you know, like I you know, we need more power unity so that we could, create a science in this and then actually prove it so that, you know, once science takes it seriously, you know, they'll prove it in so fast, you know, and I'm pretty sure that there's our scientists in the government that know the paranormal's real. They just, you know, keep it to themselves. Well, yeah, I mean, that's the thing about it. I mean, there's a lot of people out there and I agree with you hundred percent, hundred percent on that. I think if we all work together it, instead of trying to say I done it first or, 
you know, hey, I got that or I'm mad at him because he got that first. I, I think if we join together and be happy of what we catch and then turn around and, and put it into something, I think that would work better. Yes, definitely. And also, yeah. you know, we try to like, you know, see like, you know, portals and uh, vortexes and all that kind of stuff. You know, what creates them? Why are spirits in the house? We want to prove, we want to know why they're there and what they are. I mean, everybody can say that they're ghosts and they're dead people, but how do we know they're not, you know, uh, interdimensional beings or, and not all of them, but, you know, or even angels are just demons, you know, because I am a Christian, so I do believe that, you know, we go to either heaven and hell, but I believe also that there are spirits that are trapped here because, you know, you know, like if like they got into a car accident, they don't even know they're dead. They just, right. you know, but that's what I'm saying. Agree. Nobody really knows. Exactly. I mean, and that's why they say don't ever go out and say, Hey, don't tell them that they're dead or, Hey, do you know you're dead? Because you know, you don't know, you know, yeah. because that could create some kind of chaos for you. Especially exactly. when you're investigating. Uh, Jason Gar- Garvis, uh, I hope I said that right, uh, said he met you at Rolling Hills. He's an animal. He's an animal in the field. Can't wait to investigate with him at Fort William Henry. You're going to Fort William Henry. Yeah, it's in um, Lake George. It was a fort. You ever seen the movie uh, Last of the Mohegans? Yeah. That's the, that's the fort that I'm going to. Oh, wow. So, yeah, I mean, it wasn't in the movie, but that was the fort that it was based on. That is awesome, dude. You do get yeah, around. I tell you, man, you tell. I thought I'd done something every weekend. This dude does, does a heck of a lot more than I do. <laughs> the Rolling Hills was crazy, man. I was um, laying on the morgue table, and um, Jason had an experience, too. And um, But when I was laying on the morgue table, I think it was the second night I was there. And uh, this is when I met the Tennessee Rave Chasers. And uh, something grabbed my ankle. I jumped up so fast because I thought it was a person. So I almost dropped their K2 meter <laughs> on the floor. <laughs> Thank God I grabbed it. And then I looked. There was nobody around me. And I still felt it on my leg. Not just like a little touch. I literally, something was squeezing my leg, like my ankle. And really? I was like, I literally got off. He's like, and then Chris um, Smith, I think his name is. He was like, you're getting up already? I'm like, yep. <laughs> I, was like, I, mean, I didn't want to even say because I didn't want to act like I was just like because it freaked me out because I wasn't expecting that you didn't yeah. tell Chris that something grabbed you no I didn't I was a little freaked out at the time I told him later on oh okay but yeah, I was like oh you remember of... when I got up quick that was like I got grabbed and I just I didn't know what to do I was like oh, oh. I never like been grabbed I've been touched before but I never actually been like grabbed right, I couldn't even right. move my foot I couldn't even move my leg holy cow like it was holding my leg down. That would have been a heck of an experience, right? Now I've never been grabbed. I've been scratched, but that would have been a heck of an experience right there to be grabbed like that. I think that would have been wild. All right. Melissa asked, what's your favorite piece of equipment? Uh, my favorite piece of equipment is um, probably my EVP recorder, but also my full spectrum camera. I like, you know, cause I feel like that we only see 1% of the visual spectrum. So, What's up at another ninety nine percent? So when you use a full spectrum camera, you're seeing all the spectrums: the infrared, the ultraviolet, you know, right. all the different spectrums. I mean, except for like the X ray, you know, like the, um, you know, where you see the heat signatures and stuff. Thermal. Uh, yeah, thermal. Thermal. Yeah, thermal right. imaging. I have one of those too. I agree with you. And the thing of it is, uh, what do you think about the color? You know, the different. You got. You've got full spectrum, but in your honest opinion, you know, I could put, you know, that I build lights. Uh, you can put all the full spectrum lights on one light. Do you think that's actually going to help? Um, yes, I do. Really? It, uh, yeah, because we're not, I think that spirits are all around us at all times. They're just in a different dimension. And for some reason, they could see us more than we could see them. I don't know why that is. Maybe because they're spirits and they could see all spectrums. And uh, but it always it always baffled me because they don't have a voice box. So how do they speak? Which is you know that's the whole theory is that they use the vibrations and stuff around them, right? You know to uh, form words to it, just like a voice box. And that's why the spirit box and the you know the apps and stuff can work 
you know, if they're, you know, obviously you can't get some cheap one that's free. It's not going to do anything. But, you know, I've listened to times with those apps where it said nothing when I was just in my house or something, you know, testing it out. But then I go to a, you know, a haunted location and all of a sudden spitting out my name saying, you know, and spitting out my other team members' names. How would it know my name? Like, you know, I even had other people's apps when I went to the Stanley Hotel in August. Which is uh, not the Shan- uh, not the Stanley, not the one from The Shining or whatever that movie is called. This Shanley. is called the Stanley. Yeah, not yeah. That's this. This is the Shanley Hotel. This is in New York, and uh, it was like a mobster hangout for the Irish mob back in like the eighteen hundreds and early nineteen hundreds. Oh wow! And her equipment was saying my name. She even said, "Wow, I keep saying your name." Like, how can I could maybe you know? Because that's their argument is that you know the the phone listens to you. And then it spits out your name because it hears you say it. But how can somebody's app that's never heard me say my name before say my name? Exactly. Like, you know, like it's crazy. So I mean, not all of them are real, though. You know, not all of them work. Some of them are, you know, just for entertainment purposes. But there are ones out there that do work. So you think that uh, the white noise, the white noise that you can use to, you know, for them to generate voices, that's a good one to use? Yeah, well, it's the same concept as, like, um, there's radio signals around us at all times, but we can't hear the radio unless we hear it through a receiver. Right. Their, their voices are there. We pick them up on the EVP recorders. So it's the same concept. They're, you're hearing them through the radio waves. They're, they're manipulating the radio waves to, to put speech in. You know, well, I, I mean, I'm not 100% sure about them, but, you know, I've gotten very good results on them, and I'm pretty sold on them. But, of course, I could be wrong. You know, I'm not. I don't know. Theoretically, it sounds good to me because, you know, the vibrations. I mean, yeah, you do get disembodied voices sometimes, but that was, you know, hey, look at all the energy. It just pops up in front of you and stuff. I mean, eh, you could use anything to, I guess, make a voice. Yeah. I mean, it's it's interesting. I, I can't wait till you get started on the scientific part. I'm all in for you, man. Oh, me too, man. It's <laughs> you and Misty go for it. We are. We're gonna. I'm gonna try to prove it, you know, to everybody. Yeah. I mean, you know, there's still always gonna be the people like I've let people listen to EVPs, friends of mine that are not into the paranormal, and they're like, "Oh, maybe it was uh, somebody in the next room." I'm like, "Dude, we're in the basement of a psych. <laughs> of a psych like, there ain't nobody in the other room." <laughs> you know. <laughs> As I say, we snuck in here. Nobody else came in. <laughs> and I, I always seem to get a lot of results when I'm by myself, too. You know, not that I, I like going with my group, but I've been doing yeah. it for so long by myself. You know, I get really good results. But let me tell you, our team, we get like, like we would be in a place for like three hours. We'll get like 80 EVPs. Oh, wow. Like, it's crazy. I don't even know why. Like, it just seems like they like us. <laughs> I don't That's know. good, though. You all put off good vibes. And it, it lets us help people a lot, too, because when we go to a place and we get a lot of EVPs, we could piece the story together, plus doing all the history on the house. You know, we're able to help them, you know, either the spirits move on or if it's a negative entity, we get rid of them. Oh, wow. Well, that's Cat. Cat does all that, <laughs> Yeah, Cat does all that. <laughs> hey, Jason said that was nuts on the morgue table. I had my leg uh, hot, sharp pain through my back and then got ice cold, freezing cold. Yeah, I remember when he told me that. It's crazy. Yeah. And uh, Phil Mass, he's a uh, finger running up and down your back on the couch at Hinsdale. Yeah, we were there not even five minutes. And I'm sitting in the chair and the lady's giving us like the tour, talking about the house and stuff. And, uh, I literally felt like a finger going up and down my spine. I had to actually get up because it was freaking me out. <laughs> <laughs> you thought somebody was getting fresh with you. And <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, Melissa's asking, what video camera would you recommend to use on investigations? Um, well, Mike, I have um, my Listen. cameras are cheaper because, you know, I'm not rich. So uh, yeah. I use like uh a generic version of Sony, kind of, but it supposedly has a Sony uh, SOM- uh, SCMLS in it, you know, the, the sensor. But uh, oh, wow. Sony would be the only one I've seen around, like, really, that does full spectrum and or, um, or just infrared, rather, 
Most of them are just infrared. Yeah, and if you need a light, I build them. <laughs> I know. I, I used like, one recently. Now, it was very, very, very good. Uh, let me ask you. Uh, now, I just recently started using UV. I put a video up of it, and I'm I'm interested in getting more into the UV with that, though. But, you know, of course, Chris always gets uh, anything that I build. He's the man. I take care of him. <laughs> no problem. As soon as I get my uh, prototype, you, you get it, brother. Uh, yeah, just Cash- don't him to the hotel with you. Cass <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, says she's doing uh, audio on uh, Case Nine tonight, and Chris he says Chris and Phil's name's all over it. As always, <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it happened so many times that I actually had to stop getting freaked out by it. You know, it's just it constantly says my name. And my new thing is that I see repeating numbers everywhere. Yeah, you know, like I see. 1111111222 like almost every time i look at the time i feel like i'm seeing a triple number or a double number really yeah it's supposed to uh, you know it's um supposedly like your guardian angels or your spirit guides whatever you want to call them you know they're trying to communicate with you oh wow i didn't i didn't know that yeah it's kind of freaking me out it's it's actually i did it to myself because i try i was trying to have open up my third eye, which is your penile gland inside your brain. Yeah. it's uh, It regulates your sleep and your happiness. It produces your melatonin and your serotonin. Now, certain things that we eat, and one of the worst things is toothpaste because it has fluoride in it. Fluoride is actually very poisonous to human beings. There's many scientists that are finding this out now because, and they pump it into our water systems. And a lot of people believe it's the government's trying to dumb us down and not let us use our intuition or you know, or six cents. Oh, wow. So I, I have recently had an awakening and now like, I like, like I'll watch the news and I'll be like, wow, how do I know he's flying right now? Like, like, you know, like actually see how fake everything is sometimes. Oh yeah. And a, of, and a lot of scientists believe now that we actually live in a simulation. Really? You know, they call it the, they call it the God matrix, like, you know, the God's matrix or the, the divine matrix. And it's like, uh, it's almost like the movie, The Matrix. Right. But it's not robot. It's, you know, a divine being that's controlling us. And it's, it's almost like a simulation. And because um, we're, we're spiritual beings living a human experience. We're not really, fle- flesh and blood is not what we are. And right. we, we kind of control our reality. But what happens is when everybody's watching TV, the government kind of made that reality for us. So everybody's, it's like an agreed upon reality. Cause I mean, like how could only 1% of society own everything? You know, like how does the 99% stay poor and ignorant? It's just, you know, that's an interesting theory, dude. Yeah. I'm an right. old to the conspiracy theories. I call them, uh, cause you got me real. thinking right now. <laughs> I'm like, what the world? Jeffrey, oh, speaking of that, you, uh, Jeffrey uh, Lomicky, I hope I said his name right. Man, I'm terrible for asking him. You ever wonder those skeptics just don't want to believe it? That's true. That's true. I also believe that um, that um, yeah. well, I'm having feedback, but um, hey, ask the question again. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, what it was is uh, the skeptics. He says, "Did you ever wonder if they just don't want to believe in it?" Maybe. I mean, you got to think that you know uh, you've been when you were a kid, like you know, you'd be like, "Oh, there's a monster under my bed." And your parents be like, "There's no such thing as monsters. There's no such thing as ghosts." So you're kind of brought into that, like where you, you know that's why a lot of kids are very sensitive to the paranormal until they become adults because they keep getting told that it's not real. So then their life gets them and then they start, you know, I also think that's why paranormal happens at night too, because a lot of times during the day, we're always running around and then we settle in at night because paranormal happens all times of the day. Right. But everybody's more relaxed and not paying attention, you know, they're not living their life at night. They're just relaxing. So they, they're more prone to hear or see things that are there that 
you know, they normally wouldn't see when they're running around during the day. Their body slows down. Yeah, but I also think that if you are a complete skeptic and you try to debunk everything, you know, ghosts know your intentions. Yeah. You know, they you know, they they know if you're there to help or if you're there just to exploit them. You know? So I, I, think I that's, agree. You know, and then that's part of what you was talking about vibes. I mean, it'll know your vibes. Yeah. You know, Phil Mass says Trinity Paranormal is a magnet for activity. I say magnet. Oh, yeah. One, yeah, 100%. I'm surprised Since, I didn't say magnet. <laughs> much more activity with them. Since but, I joined uh, Trinity Paranormal, we've gotten crazy, crazy evidence on all the cases that we've done. I mean, we're, we're prominently, uh, you know, residential, we want to help people. But we also have to do, you know, we have to go to other places because we have to do research because you can't really help people unless you know what you're doing and what you're up I, against. I agree. You know, because it's agree. hard to like, know what you're doing when you can't see it, you know? Yeah. Uh, Jamie, uh, Jamie Dozer, uh, what is your favorite piece of evidence you ever have captured or you have ever captured? Um, that I have ever captured. Uh, I actually recently caught a shadow figure in um, Letchwork Village in full spectrum. And, uh, you know, I didn't see it at the time. I saw it in review. And it looked, you know, it just walked right across. And then when it went to go to the next window, it wasn't there. Oh, wow. Yeah, it was. That, who, I was, was the one, I it. who was the one that got the thermal at Bobby Mackey's? The thermal. Was that Phil? No, we've never been to Bobby Mackey's. Oh, you haven't been to Bobby Mackey's? No. Somebody sent me a thermal of Bobby Mackey's, and they caught uh, a really body-shaped cold spot. And Sorry, I, I thought it was one of you guys. Because I, uh, I watch a lot. Uh, yep. <laughs> I've got like 50 paranormal groups on there, and I watch everything that they pop up. And it, it's amazing of some of the stuff that everybody catches. But I thought, honestly, I thought it was you guys. I thought it was Trinity. All right, no, I, have, I've never been to Bobby Mack. Well, come on, brother. We're going next year. I want to go. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> Jason Thompson asked, uh, have you been, been inside the uh, house uh, of, the, of the Amityville Horrors? Murders. Um, no, I've never been in the house, but I've done a paranormal investigation in front of it, and I've gotten actually EVPs from from outside. Yeah, yeah. well, not from inside, from outside, because I believe that whole area is haunted. I don't know if the story from the you know from the movies are true. You know, obviously, when it's a movie, or you know, they embellish a little bit, but um, there's definitely something going on over there. You know, because there's a you know canal right there. It's on the water. It's literally five minutes from my house. Really? Yeah, Amity me and Cat did an investigation there. The Amityville Murder House is five minutes from your house. Yes, two towns over. Oh, road trip. <laughs> <laughs> they don't let nobody in though. They don't let nobody in. Oh, you're good at sneaking, brother. Yeah, it's hard to sneak into somebody's house. I don't want to get a home invasion. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to help over investigate. <laughs> <laughs> that would be all right, though. Uh, oh, wow. That's amazing. All right. Melissa asked another question. I know this is a hard question, but is there an investigator that you haven't worked with yet that you would like to do? Um, well, I mean, I've worked with, you know, some of the people on TV, but that was like their tours. I don't really consider me actually working with them. Right. But I've investigated with Nick Groff, Elizabeth Saint. Um, actually twice with Nick Groff. I uh, was at Eastern State Penitentiary. That was like four or five years ago. Oh, wow. And um, that's when he first started the Nick Groff tour. I think that was four years ago. It might have been a little sooner. But um, then I also did the Murdoch Whitney house with him. And then obviously when I met the Tennessee Rave Chasers at Rolling Hills Asylum, which I don't know if that was a ghost hunt weekend, was it? Uh... I think it was, because I remember it saying Ghost Hunt Weekend. Really? Yeah. But I'm not 100% sure about that, because I'm also meeting them in December at Statler City Hotel. Right. But that's uh, that's not from Ghost Hunt Weekend. That's a different one. Can you yeah, see that? 
Can you see that pop up on your screen? Uh, yeah, Shane, this is what makes Chris Noir. Great. I didn't see the last part, though. It says great. She's put okay. last on the face. Oh, okay, I see it now. And, I had like a little room that said something about writing a message. Hey, if it comes from uh, Misty, it's always got those little laughy things. You know how she is. Yes, I do. <laughs> we were Kat, just talking before. <laughs> Cat backed it up, says he's pretty smart and interesting to talk to. We all have great combos. Yes, we do. I love having long conversations about this kind of stuff. The unknown, you know, aliens, Bigfoot, all of it. Uh-oh. Phil Mass is going to bust you. He says, what about quantum physics? Quantum physics? Oh, uh, you really want me to get into quantum physics? <laughs> I only have, <laughs> we only got about 30 more minutes. <laughs> he, he put a big laugh, laugh of, uh, we'll say butt, laughing our butt off. But uh, uh, real quick, something real quick about it. Um, well, okay. The quantum entanglements is what i kind of been researching lately. And uh, what they did was they split a particle, you know, the same particle, and then they put them in 15 uh, me, uh, miles apart, 15 miles. And they did one thing to one particle, and it happened to the one 15 miles away. Really? So it, yeah, so it's showing that we're all connected. Like, all life is connected. The universe... Everything is connected, as as they say, as above, so below. Like our brain cells actually look like the universe. It looks very similar. So sometimes I'm like, are we like living inside another being? Like, are we like little microscopic animals somewhere? <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> Quantum well, physics is crazy. It's proven that we live in a simulated world. That like you know like you can like I've seen some crazy stuff. I mean, obviously I don't know if it's a hundred percent true, but I've seen people heal people of cancer just with prayer, just, you know, with a hundred people praying over them. Right. And then they were, you know, cured of cancer. Like our minds are so much more than we think they are. Like, um, I'm trying to think of an example, like, uh, the placebo effect, like, you know, they'll give like, you know, out of 20 people, they'll give 10 people uh, sugar pills and they'll give 10 people the medicine. And 90% of the time, people that took the placebo, you know, heal just as fast as the people who do, you know, took the actual medicine. So it's showing us that we actually can, can heal ourselves, you know, in certain you know, circumstances. That's actually why I became a vegan. You wow. know, I, I want to stop eating all the processed meat and all the crap that they put in our food. Right. And, uh, Besides losing weight, you know, because I used to be fat, <laughs> I, uh, I feel so much healthier. I breathe better. I, you know, I mean, I still, uh, I'm still vaping, and I smoke a couple cigarettes a day. I'm, tr that's my, you know, I, I stopped drinking and doing all the other crap. So I figured that was my last thing. <laughs> hey, the man, he's, you're working on it, brother. I'm working on it. I'm a working project. Go. There you go. At least you're trying to do it. You know what I'm saying? Hey, Lazaro says, what was the scariest experience you've ever had during an investigation? Actually, just recently. Uh, it happened to not just me. It happened to another teammate of mine, Kat. I was outside. They were taking a nap. in the Because, you know, we had that whole house for in the Hinsdale house. We had the whole house for the night until 10 in the morning. From like, I think it was 7, till 10, 7 at night till 10 in the morning. So I went outside to actually go smoke a cigarette. And I'm smoking, and all of a sudden, I hear something running up on me. Like, I actually even see, like, the dirt coming up. Like, something was running. So, I, like, I threw my cigarette. I start running back into the house. Because so I have no idea what that. I could have been, like, an animal, but I couldn't see it. Because, you know, there's bears upstate New York. So, you know. Right. I don't know what it's going to be. So, I run back into the house, and everybody's sleeping. And I, 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 I open the door. I go to close it, and something shoves the door back at me. Like, and it was, I've, ch me and Kat both checked the door and it does not just happen on its own. Like it literally, it wasn't the wind. It pushed back at us and, you know, and then I locked the door. I ran and everybody's still sleeping. So I'm sitting there like, I want to tell them and I'm freaked out because I'm like, oh my God, like it's a ghost. It's probably going to be able to come right through the door, you know? 
Right. Uh, I mean, but the whole place is haunted, so it wouldn't have mattered anyway. But, uh, and then right after that, um, I think it was a knocking on the window and it woke Cat up right out of her sleep. And then we both, and then right before she woke up, I heard whispering. And I, it, it sounded like it was coming from over near where my teammates were sleeping. So I said to myself, I'm all right. They're, they're talking in their sleep. But then I heard them snoring, or one of them snoring. So it couldn't have, like, very lightly. You know, I don't want to embarrass nobody. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know Cat was snoring and slobbering at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but then I heard them breathing. And, like, how can you whisper and snore at the same time? You can't. It's impossible. So, and then that's when Cat woke up when she heard something woke her up. And then she heard it. And she actually got it on recording. And uh, I didn't have my EVP. I didn't want to get up because I didn't know what it was. I thought it was them talking in their sleep. And and then I realized it wasn't. And then it literally was happening for like a good 10 minutes. And it was freak, I was freaked out, though. That was oh, freaky. Wow. That sounds freaky. Yeah, that, 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 place, that place is very haunted. Hmm. And I think it's go. a lot of American Indian uh, ghosts, I think. Oh, we're, we're talking Native Americans. Yeah, there was a uh, Dan had found out history that there was some kind of battle there that a lot of American Indians were slaughtered, and they have also found you know this is hearsay; it's not fact that they found mounds, you know, uh, Indian burial mounds on oh, the property. So, but the, you know that's only hearsay; it hasn't really been proven. So, I don't want to put any false information out there, but they're definitely right. they're doing a lot there. They've been he really cleaned Dan Class really cleaned that place up. Like, I've seen it before. Like, I've seen pictures of it before he bought it. And there was no electricity. The windows were all broken. The siding was all coming in. There was mold everywhere, water damage. And now the house is, you know, you could live in that house. I mean, you oh, have wow. to get more electricity in it, but you could actually live in the house now. But nobody, nobody lives in that house. <laughs> Almost, I don't every know family if anybody ever lived there. Got, you know, this goes back to the 70s when the Dandy family lived there. And, uh, they had some crazy experiences, though. You know, they they would see people looking in their window. So thinking that, they, you know, they were intruders, the father would run out and go see who there would be nobody there. And then he looked back in the window and then the faces were in the house looking back at him. Oh, wow. Stuff was thrown at them. There was uh, they would find knives stuck into their pictures. There was a lot of crazy stuff that happened in that house. You know, and that's what that's what I'm all about. I like to learn the history of places. I want to know what happened. I want to know why it's haunted. Right. I want to know why anything's haunted. Like, why are the spirits still here? Why, you know. Now, when, when you go and you do your uh, your history part of a place, you go back as far as you can? Yeah, as far as you can, yes. So any name or anything like that that comes up, you dig into them as deep as you can and stuff like that? Yeah, because that way, like, when you get an EVP and it says a name, sometimes, you know, it doesn't always happen, but sometimes you could put, you know, obviously, you know, we don't know too much about the American Indian history, so, right, you know, you know they didn't have names like we do. They had, like, names like Dances with Wolves, you know, like the movie. <laughs> <laughs> you know, hey, I like, watched that. I like that movie. <laughs> yeah, it was a very good movie. Uh, all right, my man, I tell you what, before, we got about 15 more minutes, but... We're going to reach over here, and we're going to mix up the board. Now, I did forget last week, and we were supposed to do the drawing. Do you all remember the drawing for the uh, – it's kind of basically the uh, – what do you want to call it? A beginner paranormal kit. You get an IR light, laser light, K2 meter. You get a couple of stickers. Uh what in the world did I, did I say was coming in there? I'm not for sure what it was. That uh, it was the producer said something, but anyway, uh, I'm sitting here and I'm mixing it all up in the bowl. Everybody's name that done the subscribe and everything like that. If you don't mind, Chris, <laughs> we're going to give this all away. There's a bunch of them that were in there, but I'm sitting there doing a nice mix. <laughs> Mixing it up, see what we got. But I need to pull that. That way I can get it out to somebody who ever wins this. I already got it. 
Tell me when, Chris. Tell me to stop and pull. Stop and pull. Stop and pull. Here we go. One ticket. Don't know what it is. Not even a ticket. Courtney Peterson. Hey, she's part of my team. Is she really? She's part of, yeah, she's a, a social media moderator. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. Courtney Peterson, you just won. You got yourself an hour light, laser light, uh, K2 meter. Uh, what else did we uh, – you got a box full of stuff. So you got some stickers and stuff like that. So I'll inbox you. I think she's my friend. Yeah, I'm sure she is. If not, I know she's on Trinity, isn't she? Yeah, she's on Trinity. Uh, she's, also on on, she's also on Things, uh, Paranormal Worldwide as well. Paranormal Worldwide, Okay. Things, yeah, things, problem worldwide, worldwide. She's a moderator for them, too. Actually, she might have been an administrator for them. She's on. She is on. There you go. Courtney's on. Yeah, she should be on. Yeah, there she goes. Congratulations, Courtney. So if you want to, just shoot us in the box. Give a, uh, We'll set up the address and stuff, but I'll mail it to you and get all your stuff to you. Give me a little bit. I'll have to pick up everything this weekend, but the good thing about it is all in one spot <laughs> but we're going to do more guys uh we are debating uh i've been talking to the producer and i've been talking to the guy that makes them uh i do believe that one of our up and coming uh giveaways is going to be an sls camera oh I want to win that. So it's actually the new version. It's the one with the 3D features in it, and you can do 360 on it. it, it oh, it's absolutely it. amazing. It, it's really wild. So that's going to be uh, coming up soon, and uh, it's just a matter of when uh, the producer says it gives me the okay to get it built and get it up here. But – Anyway, guys, real quick, you know, if you can ever want to do some uh, ghost hunting and it's your first time out there, you can always step over to www.ghosthuntweekends.com and check it out. It'll be your ultimate paranormal fan experience. All right, back to Chris. All right, my brother, let's go. Now, not only you spoke of something about just a few minutes ago, and I don't know, I don't want to push you to talk about it. You can or you can't, but. I know you've only told a few people, but you've actually had some like alien experiences. Yes, when I was a kid, I used to wake up in the park, um, um, at night, at night. and uh, I would wait, and I would always look right at my window, and I would see a little gray figure with like a kind of like a oval, like a oval head. And he had yeah. big black eyes and like almost like no nose and like a tiny, tiny slit for a mouth. And because I grew up in a haunted house, I thought it was paranormal for many years. And then, um, you know, later on when I started learning more about aliens, because I was in aliens for many years. And uh, it's literally a description of what people describe as a uh, gray alien, you know, little gray aliens. And um, so and when it would happen, I wouldn't be able to move. I wouldn't be able to speak. And I don't know. I wouldn't. I wasn't afraid. It, it was never a fear thing. It, I wasn't anything. I would just. I would literally just be stuck there. And uh, it it seemed to only last for maybe like thirty seconds. But sometimes I would look at the clock and it looked like an hour went past. So oh really? I was. Yeah. I don't really have any other. I really wanted to um, get uh, what are they uh, when they put you under? You know, hypnosis. Right. See if there was and then actually, you know, maybe I can remember it more because that's the only really thing I can remember. I don't remember. I don't think, you know, I don't think I was abducted or anything like that. But, you know, I don't know what it was. And it, it only happened when I lived at my grandfather's house for maybe about six or seven years. And, uh, and then I, uh, my grandmother had passed away and then we moved out to Long Island. And uh, then it's st that, you know, it stopped happening. And then, you know, of course, life happened. And, right. you know. Let me ask you a question. Did I don't know. This may or may not. Do you think that that may have opened you up more for what you're able to capture in paranormal? 
Um, yeah, I think so. I think that because I've been around it for so long that, you know, it's, you know, some people just have that, you know, in them, like, you know, like, you know, just like, uh, mediums and psychics and stuff. They're like, they're born with their abilities, but you know, I get, you know, obviously a lot of them are out there. that are fakes, right? But, uh, I don't mess with the psychic stuff. You know, I know a few <laughs> mediums and, you know, cause they can get crazy with the occult and doing the witchcraft and stuff like that. And not that I have, you know, I don't judge them. It's just not the way I like to do things. I like to, you know, I'm a God fearing person and I believe that, you know, you should do, you know, what, how, how God wants you to do it. And, right. you know, like pray, you know, people pray. And, you know, I, I see a lot of times when I see people come home, like, Oh, some followed me home and terrorized my life. Uh, that's never happened to me. I mean, I've had stuff follow me home, but they didn't stay along. <laughs> very interesting <laughs> <laughs> and Chris puts the whammy on him like, get out of here <laughs> no but I was, I was just thinking because it, you said that you was froze sort of like froze or you know as you can say paralyzed and they're known to uh, make you do that and I was just wondering if maybe that might have opened up not really completely your third eye but more to do in that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, probably. I mean, I couldn't say for sure, but I definitely made me interested in the paranormal a lot more than just living in a haunted house. Right. Like, you know, I was always into it. I've watched all the shows. I watch, you know, I followed Lorraine Warren and Ed Warren. Right. Uh, you know, you know, John Zaffis and all them for many years before all the paranormal blew up in the you know early 2000s with uh, Ghost Hunters and then Ghost Adventures. And now it's like the Travel Channel literally was taken over by Paranormal. Like every show now is like Paranormal show. Oh, yeah, I agree with that. It's like every time you turn the channel, there's one. Yeah. Oh, I don't mind because I like it. Oh, I like me. I like watching uh, YouTube, though. I like watching actual Paranormal teams. Yes. Like, you know, they go to places because I feel like that, you know, not that I, you know, I do feel like that some of the shows, not all of them, you know, they kind of make up evidence sometimes because they have to. Otherwise, they don't get viewers. You know. It, it, yeah, I, I agree with you 100 percent. How and you got to watch how they set the, the video up when you're watching YouTube and you can catch a lot of it. And I agree with you. I like watching. And that's where I started this, too. It, this is not just having a bunch of celebrities on. This is about having. Uh, our, our fellow people out in the field, uh, investigators that's been doing this for a while on here, telling us your experiences, what you do and stuff like that. This is what I want to do here. You know, it's not just all about, hey, you know, let me go out here and get Joe Blow. You know, he just signed a 6.9 million contract with TLC. It's not about that. It's about us, the people out here doing the groundwork. Yeah, that's right. You know what I'm saying? Now, producer asked me to ask this question. Seeing that you're up in upstate, you're in New York, right? Yeah, I'm not upstate, though. I'm in uh, Long Island. You're in Long Island. Okay, you're in New York. Seeing that up north, that that was more, um, uh, us, the more populated area when America first got settled, okay? Do you <laughs> think that that's more paranormal active than it would be down south just because of the more bodies that's up there? Well, yeah, I mean, no, not really. I mean, if you, I mean, it depends on what you mean down south. I mean, Florida is supposed to be one of the most haunted states there is. I mean, I think well, they, yeah. like Virginia had the first colony. That's true. Yeah. And then you had the lost colony too. <laughs> yeah, Roanoke, Roanoke, right? Roanoke. Yeah, but the they thing of it is, disappeared. well, I, I was just saying, you know, you got, you know, you got Boston, you got more of the, I guess, I guess that would be more of the major city of what was going on up there. Of course, we had more, and you know, had a lot down south. You got one of the oldest forts down south that uh, in Florida that you was talking about. That's Got a yeah, lot of bloodshed yeah. and torment and stuff down there. I, I don't ask me the name, but I just, I just, that's like, okay, if we left here and we went over to England, you know, Ireland and stuff over there, 
where they're, I guess you would say, older countries? Where... You well, know I don't that? know. I don't know if they're older. I mean, they're older with, you know, Western civilization. Right. But you know, America had in, uh, American Indians, and you know, for thousands but, and thousands of years, just as long as you know, there was Indians here when, uh, you know, ancient Samaria was a, a country five thousand years ago. You know, in ancient uh, Jerusalem and ancient Egypt. Right. You know, they would. You know, and also sometimes. It's weird because, like, if you get an EVP in another language, you might just think it's gibberish, you know? Right. You don't even know that you're hearing somebody try to talk to you. But see, that's that's what I'm saying. We had more. I guess you would say we would have more Native Americans over here. Would you say before yeah. you know English settled? And uh, you know, if we knew more about the Indians, I think we would have more response in the paranormal yeah. field. I think they really want nothing to do with us. Honestly, would you? <laughs> I wouldn't either. I mean, you know, they, were they, they they were very barbaric, but, you know, that doesn't give us the right to do what we did, you know? Like, we literally took the country away from them, for no, you know, because we wanted it. Yeah, it's sad because we could have learned a lot from them. Uh, there's some evidence now that we've been here longer than since Columbus, though. They found okay. evidence on uh, Oak Island, you know, out of uh, Nova Scotia, I think it is. So island, and uh, they believe this is like some kind of buried treasure under the uh, under the island, and they found Templar crosses, you know, Knights Templar. Oh, really? Yeah, there, there's a lot of. They even found like Egyptian, and um, they even found um, uh, Jerusalem, like uh, Israel, like you know, Jewish people's uh, stuff in the Grand Canyon. Right. I mean, unless it's like hoax, but I don't think it is. I mean, how can you? You know, have ancient stuff like that. Like they're finding all crazy stuff now, and I do believe that um, for some reason it's like the the mainstream historians and archaeologists and stuff don't want people to know that because then it kind of like it denounces their whole career. They believe this. You know, they learned this in school. They teach it in a you know in a university, and if it would change, then they they feel like their whole same thing with science. Right. Like if you change science now, their whole career is. You know, obsolete. That's not true, but that's how science is. When you learn something new, the new, the old science is out. You know, like the whole thing about gravity. You know, there. You know, there's a uh, energy field between everything that you can't see, and uh, I forget what they call it, but um, you know, uh, dark uh, dark energy or dark matter or whatever it is, and it it's pretty much like between everybody, and they scientists are starting to prove this, but. It, that you know, it, it, go, it goes into the category of pseudoscience because mainstream scientists don't want to believe that they've been wrong their whole career. You know, they feel like they, you know, there'll be a joke, everybody laugh at them, but that's not true. But that's how science is. When you learn something new, you have to go with it because what are you going to do? Just sit there and oh no, this is this is how it is. You know, right? Because there's got to be something besides gravity. You know, there's some kind of energy. That's what we are. That's uh, Nikola Tesla said it. If you want to understand the universe, you have to understand vibrations. Um, what is it? Vibrations, frequencies, and energy. <laughs> yeah, that's all we are. We're energy, frequencies, and vibrations. Right. That's it. And it's, it's funny that when, uh, if you read the Bible in the beginning, I don't want to go into a biblical thing now, right. but it says that God spoke us into existence like by the vibration. So that kind of goes with kind of what scientists are starting to say now. Like, how did they know that humankind were able to live 120 years, 5,000 years ago, when 500 years ago, we didn't even know we lived on a planet? You know, like, I feel like there's a some kind of ancient wisdom out there that they knew that there was some kind of bad catastrophe, you know, like during the, like the Ice Age time, like 10,000 years ago, you know, right. like the, the, you know, Atlantis and all that that there was an ancient civilization that was very smart and they got destroyed and we were the remnants of them. And uh, I do believe that. I believe that there was other civilizations before us that were maybe even technologized like we are today. Like, look at the pyramids. We could not build the pyramids today. The, oh, stone, yeah. the, the stones that they put up, we don't have a crane that could lift them. How did they move those stones from 500 miles away in the quarries? Exactly, because there was no stones around there. Yeah, and there was also 
they can't carve it when they were in the Bronze Age. The stone it, it was harder than bronze, so there's no way they could even carve. It. Like, and how do they make stuff so precise without concrete? Like, you couldn't even put a paper in between some of the uh, the stones at a, at the pyramids, even in South America. And why is there pyramids everywhere? If the, the see, that's the key. Why are you know why is there pyramids everywhere? Because I think that we people were more aware of each other than we think. Like I think that people from South America were trading with people from Egypt and China, and like I think we we actually digressed in a way. Like we were much more advanced. Oh yeah, I agree. And look at all the ancient, uh, uh, like even the Hindu, like the you know the uh, Indian religion. If you read some of their manuscripts, it sounds like a nuclear war. And they talk about flying saucers flying everywhere. They, these little, I forget what they're called, but they, they literally talk about stuff flying in the air without, you know, not birds. They're, they're people. <laughs> so, I mean, like, life is just weird. See, you know? uh, well, that's the thing. That's another thing you can get into, man. I mean, there's so much you can get into with a lot of stuff like that. Yeah, I'm a nerd. I, I know a lot about everything. <laughs> no, you're not a nerd. It's awesome, dude. It is awesome. It's I love hearing it. I love it. Well, Chris, buddy, I think Melissa asked real quick, do you have any uh, ev uh, advice for any new uh, up-and-coming investigators? Um, yes. Um, don't, you know, always respect the spirit. You know, don't go out and, uh, you know, just trying to get evidence and trying to, you know, call them out and say, you know, because they're just people just like we are. They're just right. in spirit form and they're, sometimes they're stuck and they, they're scared. You know, I mean, my uh, experience, most of the times they don't want you around. You know, they don't really certain, you know, I feel like that, you know, sometimes they get an attachment to a house and they just don't want the people there, you know. Right. Because a lot of times people can live in a house and not have any paranormal um, experiences and then all of a sudden like, they'll start doing work on their house or they'll you know, knock a wall out or something like that. Right. And then all the paranormal you know, goes crazy. You know? You know, if you try... Go ahead, but they gotta, but it's our world. You know, they're, they, they've moved on. You know? But you have to respect them. You can't be like, you know, speaking to this recorder now. Come on. <laughs> You know, like, I hear people doing that all the time, and I'm like, dude, you know, like, hey, is there any, I, I, I try not to directly talk to the spirit. I try to say, hey, if there's anybody here, you know, I always, the, one thing I always say is, like, if there's anybody here and you're intelligent, can you say my name? You know, especially when you're using a spirit box, because all of a sudden you hear, this, you know, the radio stations, you hear your name. How can the radio stations come up with your name? Like, if going through 10 radio stations in a second, right. you know, like with spirit box, or even just with an EVP recorder. Like, where does the voice it coming from? Like, where is it coming from? Like, I don't know how to, how people don't. That's generated vibe that you're talking about with through the white noise. Yeah. So the thing is, the white noise gives them energy. It gives them energy to be able to speak as well. They're there. It's just a matter of getting them to speak. I mean, that's just the way you speak to them. I just wish I knew everything. Sometimes I'm like, man, I can't wait till I die so I can find out. <laughs> <laughs> Don't even. <laughs> no, no, I'm only kidding. I'm only kidding. You can't do that until, oh, excuse me. You can't do that until we do an investigation. Exactly. Exactly. I got to take you out here in New York. Yes, I would love it, man. Man, Kings Park, let me tell you, man, it's an abandoned uh, insane asylum from, you know, it was built in like 1885. And closed in 1996, and there's there used to be over 120 buildings, but now there's about 60. Oh, wow. and they're all they're all and it's untouched. There's never been a TV show there. You know, it's mostly kids go there. It's all graffiti. You know, you have those old places are they're all graffitied up and right. falling apart. Very unsafe to be there. You should if you go to those kind of places, you definitely should wear masks and don't go there because it's illegal. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't want to get arrested on my, you know, on my behalf. <laughs> Ann said, "No dying." Okay. No, no dying. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, everybody. We thanks, that, thank you, everybody. I, I did appreciate it. I had a blast, my man. I knew this was going to be fun. Yeah.
And uh, I learned a lot from you. That's for sure. Some of the stuff that you know, especially quantum. That that's going to be an interesting story. We may have to uh, chit chat about that later. Where you, you lost go? your voice. You lost my voice. Yeah. You hear me? Why am I? <laughs> like he's all upside down. Hello. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> He's so sideways. Oh, my goodness. We lost Chris. I tell you what, guys. Thanks so much for being here tonight. If you get a chance, go on www.paranormalhighways.net. Subscribe. There he's coming back up here. He's still upside down. I'm putting him back on. He's, he's turned sideways here. If you all want to, like I said, get on www.ghosthuntweekends.com and get your ultimate paranormal fan experience. All right, next week, we got somebody that's going to be with us. That's part of Trinity Paranormal again. She is going to be fun. Probably just as fun as Chris. What do you think, Chris? Yeah, I can't hear you still. <laughs> Can you hear I, me? Yeah, I hear you. I hear you, but you're off like a uh, off the speakerphone part. Oh, really? Yeah. I don't know what in the world's happened. Oh wait, hold on. I'm joining the stream back. Oh, there's that what you? Oh, you okay? I see what you're talking about. Hey, there he is. He's straightened back up. You hear me now? Somebody tried to call. <laughs> <laughs> He's that going? Man, I'm back. Are you there? He's paused. A bit. There we go. You're making me get. <laughs> Love you guys. Give us a thumbs up. Give us a share. We'll talk to you guys later. And always and forever. All right. Spooky, my friends. All right. Love you,